I learned the hard way how preparation can make or break your med school cycle so that you don't have to. By the grace of God, your girl has gotten several acceptances to med school this cycle, even though I had a very tumultuous beginning. Long story short, I did not prep as well as I needed to for the cycle. And so when we got to the middle of it, I was very underprepared, very overwhelmed. I, I had a crash out. I burned out. I was crying at my workplace, the worst acne of my life, etc. Because I did not adequately prepare. When people say that applying to medical school is a marathon, not a sprint, they are not over exaggerating. I honestly think that the way that you strategize before even submitting your applications is the most important part in determining the success of your med school cycle. So in this video today, we're going to go over how you can adequately prepare for applying to medical school to make sure that A, you're not stressed and burned out before you even set foot on your medical school campus, and two, you have the best odds of getting into whatever program you would like. Assuming that you're going to apply this upcoming cycle, here are the things that you should be working on now if you haven't already. I would say the ideal candidate or a candidate that's prepared would have started working on the personal statement probably in the January of that application cycle. So let's say I want to submit my AMCAS or Comas application in May, I will have started writing my personal statement at the very latest January. And what I mean by writing, it just means like having a general idea of what you want to talk about, and what stories you want to share in this personal statement. I'm going to make a completely separate video on the personal statement because it is the most important essay you will ever write up until this point in your life. But long story short, this essay takes a long time. Something that I wish I did when applying to med school was spending more time in chunks from the January of my application cycle up until when I submitted, which was early June, so that it had more time to go through several rounds of revisions, getting a few people that I trust to lay eyes on that essay. I had a rough draft I made in like October and I didn't really touch it until the April of my application cycle because I was studying for the MCAT and I wish I just took like an hour, two hours a week just to tweak it throughout the, th throughout the next few months before I applied. In February is when I would start sending out emails to the people that I'd want to write my letters of recommendation. Most med schools require at least two science faculty and then one other faculty that can be non-science. Additionally, if you are if you're from an institution where you have access to a pre-med committee, medical schools will strongly prioritize having a pre-med committee send a packet or a committee letter as your letter of recommendations. I do know that if you have a pre-med committee, but you don't have a letter from them, it is something that you might have to write an additional essay explaining why you didn't get a committee letter. So in my scenario, even though I was two years out when I decided to apply to medical school, I just sent an email to my pre-med committee, give them updates on what I was doing, and they agreed to write me a committee letter. And that committee letter included letter packets from two science faculty, one of which was my PI for a, re for a research opportunity that I did. And then um, I also had non-science faculty. And additionally, I added two from clinical supervisors, I would say. So one of them was the clinical neuropsychologist that I worked with in my gap year job as a psychometrist. And another one was from an MD, PhD neurologist that I had also worked with and shadowed over the past two years working at my paid clinical job. You don't have to attach clinical letters of rec, but if a school accepts it and you do have someone that can write you a strong letter of rec, I strongly encourage you to add those letters of rec just because it can show hey there are people in the clinical field especially if they're a doctor that says that i have all the great pre-med competencies why not add it but an extra caveat is if you're applying to do schools most do schools strongly recommend if not require you have a letter of recommendation from a do specifically if you're planning on applying to do medical schools keep that in mind try to find do positions you can shadow work with get a mentor mentee relationship with because that is something that will give you an extra boost on your do application i would start asking for these letters in february because one professors clinicians etc are busy and it takes a lot of time for them to write a strong letter. And also, 
I know I feel like most people have that awkward situation where they have to send a lot of follow-up reminders to be like, hey, I'm applying to med school in May, submitting in June. So da, 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 da. so just plan for asking in February to give yourself the best shot of sitting of submitting your application on time. Let's say your personal statement is at a good is at a good spot. You already have your letters in the works. Then now is a good time to kind of consider what your activity section will look like. The activity section is where you're going to basically share your resume. Essentially, you're going to choose 15 extracurriculars that you have done that kind of tie into your journey to medicine. They don't all have to be clinical, but you will have the opportunity to have three most meaningful experiences. It's strongly encouraged that one of those most meaningful experiences is something that's in the clinical realm because you'll have an extra paragraph, extra characters to explain why the experience was most meaningful to you. It's a good opportunity to share stories about patient experiences or a supervisor that you really connected with and expand on it. So just think, you have 15 extracurriculars, three of them are gonna be most meaningful, so you have extra room to explain your stories and try to have one of them be clinical. For me, my most meaningful experiences was one, being on the debate team, and then another was a research opportunity I had. And my third was working in my current clinical role as a psychometrist. And I got a lot of questions about my clinical role. So again, that's just my experience. In the activities section, you kind of just want to show like what things have you done when you were in college that were important to you. Specifically in college, don't put high school activities in your activities section. I don't know why, that's just a rule. <laughs> I didn't create the rules, but this is where you're gonna show right about your shadowing experiences, any awards you've gotten, your research experience, any publications, your volunteering, both clinical and non-clinical if you have both, et cetera. The last thing you would focus on in this preparation phase is making sure that your transcripts are in order. This doesn't have to be a long process, but it can be. I've heard horror stories of people's transcript taking like two months to get processed from their institution. So especially if you're applying and you're still in college, you might not get your final transcripts until late May. Just make sure as soon as those final transcripts are ready, you go to your school and request those transcripts and submit them to AMCAS and or ACOMIS, just so you don't have the transcript receipts being something that delays your cycle more than it has to be. In addition to this, unfortunately, you have to manually enter all of your grades into the AMCAS and ACOMIS platforms. So that takes a long time, at least for me, like it was so boring that I had to like space it out over a few days. Acomis does have the option where you can pay some money to have someone enter it for you. But I was like, okay, no, it's something that I can do. So might as well do it. But yeah, it does take a lot of time. You have to enter in each of your classes, what grade you got, what category of class it was. Like, was it an OCHEM, biochem, chemistry? Was it pass, fail? How many credit hours? So it will take a little bit. And you have to do it based on your official transcript. So again, it's important that you have this in your possession so that you can enter that in and not worry about it and submit on time. So when is submission? What is applying early? So AMCAS and ACOMIS have slightly different dates for, for when their portals open. ACOMIS starts a little bit early. The DO cycle is a little bit earlier than the MD cycle. So they actually open their portal in early May. I'll put the specific date somewhere on the screen. So prepare for that if you wanna to apply to DO schools. Prepare your application for an early May submission if you want to be really early. I know my pre-med committee though said that they would not expect to finish their committee letters until late May. So your pre-med committee might say, I know you were gonna submit your application in early May. We're not gonna submit our committee letter until late May. And that's totally fine because for verification, you don't need letters of recommendation. You really just need your personal statement and your transcripts and activities. So their committee letter can be sent later. You'll still get verified on time. AMCAS, however, opens a little bit later. I believe this year it's May 26. I'll put the official date for the 25-26 cycle on this video. So again, if you want to apply early, what people recommend is submitting your primary application, again, your transcripts, personal statement, activity section, by early June. So let's say it opens on May 26th, a week after that will allow you to be in the 
initial phase or first wave of when so when secondaries get sent out that's another thing we won't worry about that right now essentially if you want to um, apply early you want to submit your primary application as soon as possible in june if you're applying to md schools now what's the importance of applying to medical school early medical schools work on a rolling basis so the sooner you get your application submitted sooner you're verified the sooner you'll have the opportunity for medical schools to lay eyes on your application. A lot of people freak out about this, especially if you're chronically online and you stay on Reddit or SCN for too long. People will act like if you don't submit your application for verification mid-June, you might as well not apply. That's not necessarily true, but the earlier you apply, you're basically giving yourself a greater opportunity for medical schools to see you and not other people. So let's say you submit your AMCAS application the first day it opens. That means you can be verified come June. So you're not worried about, oh my gosh, my transcripts get in, whatever. That's beneficial because then you can, if you haven't already, you can start pre-writing your secondaries so that when medical schools send you other essays in late June, July, you can already start writing their school specific essays, which are the secondaries. Then the sooner you submit your secondary essays, the sooner that schools can read them and then get back to you and decide whether or not they want to send you an interview invite. And the sooner that you get an interview invite, the sooner that you interview, the earlier you can get accepted. This is great because earlier in the cycle, schools send out more acceptances because they have more seats open. As the cycle continues, as the months roll by, the interview invites start to slow down along with the amount of acceptances the institution sends out because they have less seats available that's why people really emphasize the apply early apply well thing because if you apply early you'll have the best odds of getting your medical school acceptance however it's not the be all end all if you don't submit your application until later in the cycle for example i submitted my application for verification I would say like June 7th, and I was verified July 10th, which is still considered early. And that meant I got my secondaries mid-July, which is still good because most medical schools don't start sending interview invites until August. So I still had time to crank out my secondary essays before the interview invites started rolling out. I hope that helps demystify some of the med school application timeline things. I know it's a lot of information, but Long story short, you want to start preparing all of the things for your application, your essays, your letters of rec, your transcripts as early as possible. So then when May rolls around, you feel confident of submitting that primary application and you have time to kind of relax and start pre-writing your secondary essays, which are the school specific essays that are going to go to each program that you applied to and wants to learn more about you. The earlier you submit your primary application, the earlier that you have the opportunity to tell these schools that you applied to why you want to attend them and why you would be a great candidate for an interview. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any questions about the med school application process. I know this might've been a lot, very overwhelming and it's an overwhelming cycle, but just know that the more you prepare, the less overwhelming everything will seem as you go along this very strenuous cycle. All right. See you next time and best of luck.